Hi, this is Jojo with Hookup Beats Podcast, and today we have some very special guests with us. We have Chad, we have Wayne, and we have Tom. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about the Grom program that uh, we started years ago, and why don't we start with that, Chad? How did you come up with the Grom program, and what does that mean to Hookup Beats and the future of our fishing? Yeah, well, the Grom program basically came from when I was a kid and the neighborhood dads, there was two neighborhood dads that would take me fishing with them. They had private boats and I fished with their sons and then I started fishing with them on their boats. And I did that from like age 12 all the way until like their own sons got out of fishing, probably around age 15 or 16. I continued to fish with the dads into my 20s. <laughs> so... You know, and then just them taking me on all the, that's where I got my start in saltwater fishing is with other people's dads taking me fishing on their boats, right? And I see these kids, you know, when we started hookup baits and they start catching fish and they just, you can tell they're just posting multiple times a week about fish they caught on fish, the hookup baits and they're fishing here, they're fishing there. They're like where I was when I was a kid. If there's a body of water or a stream or a creek, (laughs) It don't matter. I'm going to see if there's fish in it, and I'm going to That hasn't it. changed. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Same problem. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, yeah, I see these kids that are like that. They're just going fishing any chance they have, wherever they have, you know, and then to give them that opportunity to go out on the ocean on a private boat, which a lot of kids don't have that option, right? And so I just wanted to, how important that was in my life, that it was done to me as a teenager. I wanted to just, you know, Man, I need, I want to, you know, first of all, it was just, I want to take that kid fishing. He need, he needs to go out on a boat, you know, and it just kind of started from there. And then I'm like, you know, okay, well, I want to keep on doing this. And so, you know, it went from just you tag hookup baits, uh, Grom of the Month, and hashtag Grom of the Month, and just know you're interested, and then we draw a name out of the hat. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then that, we did that for the first year, I think. And then it was all the kids that had to, lot of passion for fishing and the ones that were really showing support were the ones not being drawn out of the hat <laughs> it was just like guys that made one post and then all of a sudden they get to go grow on the month and now i'm like you know that's not that fair <laughs> yeah. and so then the next couple of years i think we did it for like three years mm-hmm. two or three years i just started hand picking okay this kid deserves to go okay now this kid deserves to go you know and, and so that's how i did it for the next few years and it worked much better that way and and then, uh, you know, then COVID came, and then after COVID, we got super busy, and so that was kind of the end of the grum of the month. <laughs> so, um, but we're bringing it back, and not to the same extent of level, because I had a lot of time back then, and I had extra baits back then. And <laughs> yeah, you had time every month. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like going to be... No, no, no. no. I that, was, even that was field research back then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't even have time to take Wayne Goto fishing anymore. <laughs> Man, You're out, you missed the Grom program. <laughs> I, I, I never got picked. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it, it was awesome doing it. I met so many good kids. And, uh, you know, and it was, it was the invite was, you know, the kid gets to bring... Two people with them. And this is usually a brother or a best fishing buddy and a, and a dad. You know, it's kind of how it always worked out. And um, it was cool. And it was a great experience for all of them. And they would catch the most fish they ever caught, the biggest fish they ever caught, and all this stuff. And then a lot of them turned into ambassadors. You know, mm-hmm. Cash, um, Patrick, Hayden, um, who, who else? Jackson. 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 Logan. Logan. Yep. Yeah. There's a multiple Jacob. of them. Yep. Yeah. You know, turned into ambassadors. You know, now a couple of them even work for us. You know, the <laughs> Patrick and Hayden, they work during the summer. Pa- uh, Hayden's come back this summer. They're now their employees. You know, mm-hmm. so it's pretty awesome. It's full circle. So. And and Tom, what was that like? Um, you remember the beach event where Cash was chosen. To, he was a Grom. And then talk about that, and then he moved to an ambassadorship, and talk about how that has changed both of your fishing um, together, and um, how he has, you know, had hookup baits and, and just great presence in his life. Yeah. So when you say hookup baits has a great presence in his life, we're not talking about the bait. Um, like 
the group, family, people, whatever you want to call it, with the union that we all have together. Now, I definitely am a part of our group. At the time, I was an outsider looking in, and there's there's a couple layers to the Grom of the Month thing that makes it so special. You, you want the access to see what a big time, you know, fisherman with a nice boat, all that, you know, how they roll, you know. You want to know how they operate, you know, it, at least I did, you know, and uh, my son as well. We, we had limitations. I have never owned a boat until after the Grom trip. Um, I had been on very few private, you know, trips. As a kid, I did it with, you know, my teens with a couple people or going, you know, I did sport boat half day stuff like that, but not a lot of private boating. And I wanted Cash to have that opportunity. So I will never forget when I saw on your guys' post, you guys were at, it was a San Diego Angler meeting and Chad had done a little clip about this is what's going on. We're starting a Grom program. This is how you enter. You put your name, you, you, just like you described. Mm -hmm. So, and it held a little, uh, that was kind of a double for me because I'm like, there's a San Diego Anglers Club? Because that was like right in where I grew up as a kid, down there in Mission Bay. I had a lot of time with my family and all that, so it really was great. And it just super inviting. So Cash, right away, once he knew about it, he just started working so hard. And let's literally think about that, like Chad said. He started working. So the he, he was like a little job to him, and it's fun. We're fishing and having a good time, but it gave him a focus. It gave him something to do, and it gave him a goal. And he's he, great at it. Yeah, he had that goal forever to, to make Grom of the Month. And I think some of the best strides he made was just in working towards that goal, you know. Mm -hmm. Without that goal, he didn't have that opportunity. And then we fast forward to when we actually entered the, the tournament, the first Hookup Bates tournament. Uh, Cash did real well. And then at the end, obviously, you know, Wayne was MCing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everybody's dog tired. Uh, I know I've said this before. Everyone remembers that moment. Yeah, it's like the, I got to call my mom moment. When uh, Cash won, everybody's half asleep because they've been up since 4 in the morning. And he's just like on 200% stoked because he just got third place of all things. You know, the guy that got first place was excited, but Cash was more excited. Oh, no, that, that was the greatest moment of MCN a tournament result. Mm. When he came running up screaming, and I got to call my mom. Yeah, and every... he, that was after he got Grom of the Month. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, when he announced. So, so he got yeah. his third place and was happy and was going up to receive a, a grab bag of, you know, donation or raffle type stuff mm -hmm. that you win when you win prizes. And then that's when Chad... I said, yeah, well, yeah, wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was a big month in our life period because we had a lot going on fishing-wise, and it was just like the icing on the cake. We were already going to have this awesome October. And then, like, what? We have a Grom trip, too. So he had his first tuna trip that month in some other stuff as well. But the Grom trip, just light years, fast-forwarded so much for us. And it wasn't just fishing. Um, we went out, and it was exactly what Chad described, a trip down to a spot where Cash got his... And I'm a Grom of the Month by guilt by association, okay? Because this was all new to me as well. And I am like a sponge. I just love to learn stuff. And everything happening in front of me was so new and it was like so efficient. You know, the hookup baits caught so good and so many things happened. And it was a lights out trip with calico sand bass chad hooked a, a, a tuna um we, we got huge bonita rockfish everything you could imagine all on the one bait and it just blew my mind um and then in cash winning that grom of the month trip cash uh, chad had explained to us a lot of the stuff that he likes to do which included tournament fishing the angler club and just set all these little leads and every one of these little seeds were things that sprouted that my son had desire to do and it gave him now, multi, uh, multiple different positive things to set goals and work towards. And he did. And he killed it. You know, I think a lot of people have come to know who my son is through hookup baits and his fishing and his personality. And his hair. And his, his hair. hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a great kid with a great heart. And I think you guys identified that quick and realized, hey, you know, you helped him out. You know, you gave him a leg up. You rewarded him. And that's mm -hmm. what I felt you were re when you got to the end there where you were like picking them he was rewarding kids and it, it paid just a hundredfold cash became a full-on tournament fisherman he was never huge into team sports however you know you could still be as rogue as you wanted on your your own team you know and do how you want to do to fish so hey we you know fish dogs moved in and we started doing our thing <laughs> Uh, that, then that moved us through a, a, a whole just beginning process of learning a whole new side of fishing 
And I always tell people that becoming an ambassador for my son, which was amazing, it was this like campfire cookout surprise mm-hmm. thing that Jojo and the team, everybody put up and we surprised Cash and he signed his ambassador contract. I wanna say you guys were fishing that day. Or, I okay. lied to him and told him that we were oh, gonna okay. go that's fish the barge and fishing, that's all yeah. we were doing, yeah. okay. but we were really come down for an evening bonfire and then I did take him out and we fished the barge that night at San Diego Bay. So it was really cool, really special. And um, he really took that uh, oh, seriously. Oh, he had the pen. He signed oh, the yeah. contract. Yeah. I mean, this was serious. And his ambassadorship, he has takes very seriously still to this day. He really doesn't care like what other people think about him. When I go, hey, check that kid out. He knows what I mean. You know, he grabs his stuff. He rolls up to him, and he does the same thing that Chad did to him. He opens up his you know, whatever he's got, and he gives him one. He's hey, try this, this, and that. Still to this day, he's 16 years old, and that will, will be in August, and that's a time when kids usually try to be cool and not do that. But since he learned this charity that you pick up from being in the club, being part of the team with Hookup Baits, and he also got really into doing like little giveaways and stuff, so mm-hmm. charity, he fundraised. He And I'm going to draw all this back to, you know, obviously parenting is a role between his mother and I, but that opportunity he just needed a little shot and a little chance to go the right direction and he followed it and he still is and it's it's a great thing well he's matured we've watched him grow up he's matured he's a great ambassador he wants to give back right he's paying it forward he's got all those little skill sets that we really want from that next generation that we want to find all of those people because that's why we do everything we do Right? Mm-hmm. We're not doing it for us. We're doing it for them yes. and the next generation and what they're going to get back. And that kid does it. Day in and day out, he lives it. And that you just can't, you can't just make that. That, that was a, a, a stone that became a gem. You know, mm-hmm. it was just one of those things. And to watch it happen and to know that, that Hookup Bates was what caused it, what was the starting point and giving that kid the spark. Mm-hmm. And dad watching it and watching you two both get in the tournament mm-hmm. circuit and start winning, that enthusiasm you can't buy, right? Yeah. Um, it just, there's so many pieces to that yeah. that they want, he wants to do it right. He wants to help. He wants to get that next group. And his working with his peers is going to pay much more dividends than us trying to talk to his kids, right. those kids, yeah. right? We, right? Us as a parent going down versus a peer talking, it's a different relationship. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, for sure. And what's great is it's not a competition to him. He wants to help them to get better. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's and so it, fun it, to watch. Well, you oh. even noticed in taking people out on your boat where Cash is there and he's so helpful. Or Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, the, the, the position of being a steward of the sport became a role that I felt like Cash and I were chosen at a certain point to do. And it's not something we choose to do. Like, we're stewards. That's what we do. We tell Mm -hmm. people about the good, the bad, the ugly. We want to help everybody. I mean, even since the beginning, when I did get a boat and we're commuting in and out of the harbor, anybody in trouble at all, paddleboard or whatever, I always go to them and cash would be like, really, again, Dad? You know, and I'd be like, (laughs) and I'm like, dude, like, I'm telling you, we're all like this band. Everybody on the water. It's a safety thing. It's, It's not etiquette. It's... You, that's right. It's mm-hmm. gonna be life and death at one point for every single person that's trying to cheat death in a plane, out on water, in a vehicle, anything. And then there's an unspoken family or brotherhood or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. The Grom program just kind of like taps into that little nerve mm-hmm. and it does a little check on that person. And if you receive that Grom trip and you take that catalyst and run with it, that's great. You know, Mm -hmm. it's amazing. It's just that little drop of whatever you needed to like, yeah, you could do this too. Like I, it's really easy. I think for me as a person to idolize someone or look up to someone and then create a separation between you and that person. And they're not a person anymore. They're like this, look at that idol. And then I was just going to say that cash doesn't realize it, but in his uh, sphere of influence, 
he is a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is no, the person I, that I, a lot I mean, of those kids will look up to because they're looking at him because now he's the guy with the opportunity. I, he gets to go do things that nobody else got to go do. Mm-hmm. He's in tournaments. He's winning. He's doing all this stuff. Look at all these places he gets to go, and yeah. look what he's doing with his dad. And oh, they get to go on the boat. They don't have the boat. They don't have the tackle. They don't have the the people mentoring them. Right. So they're looking up to him as that celebrity status yeah. and within his own group, and that is special. He's very grounded. Yeah. He has not gone to his head, which is great. Yeah. I know? get that from kids. I get that all the time. I want to be ambassador like Cash. I yeah. want to be. Yeah. I want to do what Cash did. Yeah. You know, I get that a lot. Well, I'll tell. Anybody, well, we all want to be like Chad, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing. So. <laughs> I have an answer to that question for anybody. Always is if um, when I hear people talk about sponsorships and pro staff and this and that, um, if you want to be that, don't ask to be that. Be that. Do the work you know, first. Do it. Be it first. Earn it. My dad taught me that when I was a kid. I never did this specific thing per se, but he's like, you will never be without a job if you just go start working. Go down to the grocery store, grab 20 carts, roll them all back, put them in, then go inside and talk to the guy and say, hey, I would like to get a job here. Not walk in and say, if I start working here, how much will you pay me? Yes. You know, it's, and, and that is or a say, very valuable I, you thing. You need to hire me. Like, I get yeah. that all the time. Uh, I, I, you need to put me on your pro staff. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Really? No. It says who? <laughs> so you put yourself on that pro staff first and make an impact on the people yeah. around you, and, and the world will carry you as that person if you create that for yourself. And, you know, and so. every one of our ambassadors did fish, show passion. Was a good person. Yeah, you know, sp- spread the love of fishing, spread the love of hookah baits first mm. before they became ambassadors. Nobody just is like, "Hey, you're an ambassador," or they asked, "Hey, can I be an ambassador?" Sure, be an ambassador. Not a yeah. single one, not a single person. That's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. And I get that weekly. Hey, how do I be a pro staff? Well, then I go and look at their page, you know, yeah. from Instagram. A one fish yeah. on a hookah bait mentioned in. Why would I put you on my pro staff when you made one post that you caught a fish on a hook of it? Right. Well, that's not going to happen with mm-hmm. any company, not only us. That's yeah. just not well, how it works. And I think also when we had initially talked about it, Chad, every, every company can have a pro staff. Every company can give some kids some baits. And when mm-hmm. we really talked about what was important to you as a child and the values of the company, that's when we said we're going to make this more. And mm-hmm. this is going to be about mm-hmm. values, integrity, and our future in fishing. And let them know what CCA is and and be a part of this community that we so much need to keep fishing alive of when we were kids, mm-hmm. all of us, and how impactful that was of having fishing in our lives. Yeah. So, sure, any company can have a pro staff, and, and that's great. Mm-hmm. But we wanted these kids to really learn the values and understand it is a responsibility they are accountable they have responsibilities to continue Mm -hmm. the ambassadorship is a 12-month contract Mm -hmm. it's a contract they have to sign the ground program as well now so it it is a a very serious on both our part we have to um, keep our obligations of what we've agreed to Mm -hmm. and so do they so Mm -hmm. i think you know what what has been created has has certainly touched our hearts of the worst part is they grow up. I like them when they're little kids (laughs) (laughs) and now they're taller than both of us. It's kind of funny like how the shows went away for the last couple years, right? And then this year at the shows, I've seen at least three or four of my future or my, my groms before. I don't even recognize half yeah. of them. I recognize the dad. Yeah. <laughs> and I recognize, and I see so many faces nowadays. Right, right. Right? Oh, yeah. I see, okay, I've met this guy before. I've known him. And they come up, oh, hey, Chad, what's up? This and that. And I'm talking to him. But now they're like, hey, and, Chad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, Chad. <laughs> and they're, like, they're like six feet tall now. Yeah. I don't know what's in the food <laughs> yeah. nowadays. What is it? Yeah. And, uh, and, the, and then I start putting two and together. And I'm like, oh, Grumble the Wealth. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, where are you yeah. doing this? Oh, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm going to college and I work on a boat. Boats at a, you know, here, I work on boats here. You know, I, yeah. Three of them worked on boats now, you know, and, cool. and they're all going to college and stuff. And yeah, they're men, well, but little, they still, little they still remember yeah, Rom of little the month. Paul. Yeah. 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 All... <laughs> little, I mean, little, little Paul. We still call him Little Paul. What is he, 6'4 now? <laughs> Paul Weezy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, just 
the kids grow and it's it, but it, just having that break of the show you know because that shows is where I usually see them all you know where it's going to hurt is when that next generation of their kids come along as your grounds <laughs> yeah that's when you're going to feel <laughs> it because it's coming <laughs> yeah I, I noticed something cool that has happened organically that i don't know if it was ever planned or not about the ground program so first of all life is competitive right Mm-hmm. So all these kids are competing to do well, right? It's a positive thing to mm-hmm. be a Grom. Well, now all the kids that are Groms, and now they want to be an ambassador. So they're going to push it a little more to get the ambassador. Well, we also have a group of great ambassadors. Well, what's still happening? They're all still competing against each other in a positive way. Not like, oh, I beat you, but like my son wants to try so bad to win what Tanner won last year. <laughs> the, you know what I mean? species of war, yeah. Right, and then Tanner's <laughs> probably been thinking the same thing about what my son won last year, and he's going to What they do, the tournament fishing. The tournament fishing. <laughs> so it's so it's like yeah. this awesome little snowball of like... Well, that's, and that kind of shows, each ambassador has their own thing. We have a freshwater bass right. stud, you know, we have this tournament angler, then we have... Tanner that gets to go all over the world and catch species. And, you know, right. just, each grom has their thing. You know, then we got a trout fishing grom. Just... Right. Well, there's a pecking order in the tournaments too. Chad's at the top, then it was Frank. You know, and those guys, and they kept coming down. And it's like, I'm gonna pick this guy up. I'll pick this guy up. I'll pick that guy up. <laughs> and every so often it happens, right? Yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. pick up it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you hear Panda just whine the whole time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, it's a cycle for sure. I mean. I don't think you know, Chad's been at the top for all of us. You know, we haven't knocked him out, but like, um, you guys are all creeping up. They're creeping up on him. Oh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> we've all we've, we've all had our moment though, you yeah. know, and it's really cool. Everybody and we all celebrate each other. This year has not been like numbers wise the biggest like winning year I've had in saltwater bass series, but it is the best year I've ever had because we learned a lot. We hit venues that we didn't normally. And we tried so freaking hard. This is, again, something my son and I are doing together as a team because of the ground program to qualify to the championship. We made it. Well, guess what happened? The team that, you know, that was also an ambassador at one point, or a ground at one point, right, JoJo? Yeah. Who was that? Banda. Frank. Oh, Frank. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Frank, we know you weren't a Grom, but Sorry. that was JoJo's yeah. funny little thing yeah. she said earlier. He was an ambassador. Frank he wasn't was Panda right. back then. He was a cub. looking at me, but I'm, I'm, I was thinking when Wayne and I were just saying, what is a small panda? So it's a I cub. Had, I had cub oh, in my head. Okay. So that, yeah. <laughs> so, so when, panda, know, when the panda was a cub. Yes. <laughs> so the year prior, you know, after every tournament, Frank and Dell would say, oh, we're coming for you. We're going to get you on the next one. Well, this year, I've been saying that to them, and they're doing great, and they're beating us, and I'm celebrating them when they win. It's like, yes. You but know? everybody's coming up. Everybody's yeah. getting oh, better. Yeah. You oh, yeah. you guys don't need to go and shadow somebody or look at somebody and go, this is, I mean, I don't know my game plan. I don't know. No, you have it in your head because you've exactly. learned right. how to be better fishermen, mm-hmm. right? And sure. now watch out because the shadow is going to become, oh, no. yeah. I see. And I you, they're on your tail. They're coming. coming. And I, It'll be fun to watch that. Who's going to kick the king off the chair, right? The throne. <laughs> Who's yeah. going to kick you? And it's coming. It'll happen yeah. at some point. Mm-hmm. And it'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Well, it's a funny thing. They all learned from me. And on boat positioning, on how to present the baits and everything. And we all use the same baits. And now they're just catching up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's making it even tougher but it's making it funner too and so it's 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 a cool thing to see and that's what i want to see some of our groms get in the tournament fishing and then they follow the same route up you know to the top so i have a confession in the grom of the month department as well oh (laughs) Um, so i honestly i really want to do that for other people you know Mm -hmm. as, as much as it happened to me i really enjoyed it and i always you know once i got a boat i felt like i had access so i get what you're like get these other people the same access so it's it's also probably sparked something in me and my son that we'll continue to do for the rest of our life and that's invite people on our boat mm-hmm. whether they're a stick or they're not you know right. just just to get them in there and, and like, uh, you know and I talk every once in a while I'll just reach out to someone I'll see him doing something cool and I'll be like man I gotta get you on the boat and I got a couple guys that I owe trips right now and I literally do like have a list there's Charlie, I got you. I told you I'm going to get you. And then Nick <laughs> is next because I gave away one, you know, but it's the same spirit, just carrying on, you know, mm-hmm. give your, you know, pay it forward. Yep. Well, yeah. on that note, let's just take a quick break and we will be right back with this great podcast. We'll be right back.
Hi, this is JoJo with the Hookup Bates podcast, and we are back with Chad, Wayne, and Tom, and we're talking about the Grom program and Groms that have become ambassadors here at Hookup Bates. Um, let's kind of touch back base on what you had said, uh, Wayne, about you know how each of the ambassadors have now become even better anglers, and we're seeing each of them move up in the ranks of you know Chad, Chad's you know been the king. Um, but what I heard yesterday just really touched my heart is when Dale um, said to you, Chad, he said, you know, because Dale and Frank are doing really well right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they he's... both beat me yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yesterday's tournament by one point. <laughs> oh. wah, wah, wah. One ounce, I mean. <laughs> Not one point, one and, ounce. <laughs> but Dale said, you know, Chad, I want to thank you yeah. for everything that you have mm-hmm. taught us, and we wouldn't be here without all your help. And I thought, you know, that is wonderful. Mm-hmm. It makes losing a whole lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish Dale had been a, a Grom so we could mention it. That guy has a heart of gold. Yeah. He is a amazing ambassador. He yeah. is. Yes. He's just a for be- sure. Absolutely. great person and a, just humble. Yeah. He's humble. And he's been rolling with cash the last couple of tournaments because I've had yeah. to work, yeah. you know, and he gets it, you know, and, and they're having a great time. They are. Awesome. They're having a great and I time. think that's good that you switch up partners every so often because you do get something from somebody else, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. And you yeah. pick up something, you you build better bonds. You know, I mean, we bring up different people on the boat, and mm-hmm. you especially, yeah. every week is somebody yeah. else. But it's amazing how those relationships have built and grown over time for yeah. all of us, right? Yeah. The, the, the Hookup Bates family or the fishing family in general mm-hmm. has just grown. Yeah. And it's fun to watch, oh, even from the oh. sideline, because I can't get out as much. But it is fun to watch it from the sideline and watch the passion for fishing come up. But we're doing it the right way. We're teaching sustainability. We're teaching proper technique. We're teaching, you know, uh, appreciation yeah. for our favorite sport. And yeah. I love watching it. Yeah, I mean, we go out there and we catch a, a couple hundred fish, but we're killing two. Yeah, <laughs> killing what you or can none. Table or, none. or none. Yeah. Or none. Exactly. I mean, we're doing real yeah, proper the, techniques the, of catch like, and release yeah. and descending devices. And yeah, and that's what I teach. All these groms have done that. A lot of them come on the boat and say, oh, yeah. "Yeah, we want to bring some fish home." Okay, we'll go catch a couple hundred bass. Then we'll go catch two or three reds. Yeah, there's your fish to bring home. Right. Oh, well, we want a whole cooler. Well, no, this is what you can eat this week, and that's what you're going to bring home. Right. And I teach them that, you know. And then yeah. they get home. I go, "You fillet this one." Fish, it's gonna. This one fish will feed three to four people. Right. There's more on that three or four pound red. Yeah, will feed a family. Yeah, that only takes one fish for a night's dinner. Yeah, that's right. And and they just they see on social media and people come back with coolers full of fish and yeah. stuff. And then you teach them, you know, three fish is gonna feed you for three dinners. Yeah, <laughs> you know, what I mean, then other after that it's gonna sit in the freezer for a year and you don't want to eat it. That's right. right. You know, and then once they learn that, they're like. Oh, okay. That's how you do it. You don't need to bring home ten or a bucket full of, or a cooler full yeah. of fish. Bring home what you need for that month fishing. until the next time you get to go fishing. Mm-hmm. That's right. Keeping fish is a very backwards process. If you <laughs> take them home and then find out that you don't know how to process, package, and save it, you just wasted probably three quarters of what you caught. Mm-hmm. So it's safest to bring home only what you can table and eat. In that one time, and then like it gives you, you an excuse to go fishing again. Yeah, how are you going to go again when the freezer's <laughs> full? <laughs> yeah. um, Wayne, why don't you touch base on the kids programs that CCA offers? Well, we do this across uh, the whole state of California, and what we do is we've partnered originally with the Department of Fish and Wildlife and their fishing passport program, and that's teaching new anglers about our favorite sport. And then a lot of times we concentrate on what we do with the kids. And we've taken that the next step forward. And we do kids trips up and down the state with a lot of the fishing clubs. And we sponsor those out because we want to give back to the future. And this is our way of helping out kids that never get on the water, don't have access to it. Their parents don't fish maybe or don't know how to do this stuff. And we're trying to impart that little nugget to get them excited, one, to come down to the water, not be afraid of the water, learn a technique, learn our, understand our sport, understand, be responsible, how we're being sustainable to our our sport and all those things. And we're planting that nugget and hopefully sparking that passion. And if they get that spark, maybe they come into the Grom program with hookup baits or, you know, or or one of the fishing clubs. And those programs are phenomenal. They, Mm -hmm. you see it on what we do with hookup baits, but Seeing that at a state level and yeah. having people call us up and go, 
man, that was great. I got my dad involved, my mom mm-hmm. involved. All of a sudden, they got and bought a boat. They're out taking us fishing, and now it became a family activity, especially when we went through this COVID period. Yeah. Everybody was locked up. The first thing they wanted to do was get out to the outdoors. Mm-hmm. And what they want to do? They wanted to go fishing. Yep. So that really helped a lot. And I, to see that at a larger scale level is yes. rewarding. And I think that's what all of us need to do. When you hear about people saying, I'm going to mentor somebody, I'm going to get somebody involved. Man, I'm all about that. I will help every time to try to get that person on the water, help that person get some tackle, teach them. We love giving the classes on, on how to do it. Mm-hmm. what the techniques are, the tackle, every piece of that we yep. can teach. Yep. And we want to. We want to share the knowledge, you know, the definitely. passion. And I love that. And so we will continue to do that as, as long as I am around. Yeah. So I, I agree. Yeah. It's just like if, if you're a person out there using hookup baits, I mean, first hookup baits is going to help you. They're yeah. so easy to use. There's no wrong way to use them. You're going to catch fish. But then... I have videos, I do seminars, I do a ton of seminars. I do everything I possibly can to help people catch fish. For, and if you, you have know, a question, you can always it, message. It's social call, media. That's, I'm, oh. that's my part-time job is answering questions yeah. on social media. You know, or just saying, good job. You yeah, know, people exactly. sharing their catches with us. Good job, nice right. catch. You know, Keep slaying, all this stuff. I say over and over every day, and I don't mind it. Yeah. Tag, it doesn't get old. Tag, tag us because we want to see it. Yeah. What do you think? We get bored too. We're like, okay, I'm sitting in a meeting. I'm going through my phone looking at all these gadgets. Jealous, 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 jealous. <laughs> Holy crap. That one will be Chad. <laughs> um, Tom, now you've brought things kind of full circle with your family, with um, your brother and their and his children, and talk about how you're getting them into fishing. And Well, they've been uh, victims of my Grom of the Month tri- <laughs> trips as well. So. <laughs> Um, my family, obviously, everybody, we've all been just a I mean, part of fishing. If nobody saw my podcast, I literally was like kicked into the sand at the beach as a kid and watched my parents just <laughs> fish all the time and grew up, you know, fishing around fishing in, in many different ways. So um, it, it's been really cool. And then what I've done with them, they've always, my brother has a little different skill set. He was really into, he had a skiff that he went to like Skinner and went bass fishing and stripers and all that. Um, he had, same exposure I did to salt water as a kid, but I was like, "Hey, man, come out to the bay with us. You and your son Brody, who's you know nine years old. He might have been a little old. Oh no, he's he was ten when we took him out, and we took him out, and it was Grom of the Month trip. I mean, obviously on a smaller level, we took him to the bay. He caught a bunch of spotties, caught some other you know sand bass and things like that. And again, he got a glimpse in to see how someone that has that system all dialed how they do it. You know, from trailering to driving and he had to drive the boat you know all that stuff and you just see it spark that in him and now every time i go over there i'm the cool uncle so <laughs> yeah and then my niece i've taken her out as well she's you know i didn't like push the fishing on her we just a little harbor tour but i you know it's a blessing to have that presented to you and see what an impact it has on yourself and then be able to just kind of pay it forward and keep doing it so I, i'll always do that i think in the same spirit you know um I received a lot of help from my friends and everybody around me as a kid. You know, if there was something I was lacking, they identify it. And it was like skateboarding was a big thing for me. We all were like kids, just kids always do this, your lunch or whatever. You pile all your stuff together and make sure your crew's right, you know, mm-hmm. and, and fishing's no different. You know, it's it, the whole group of all of us, not hookup baits, just everybody in the ocean. It's something we can screw up. You know, we can lose our access, as Wayne will tell you. <laughs> it doesn't take a lot to go the wrong way, but it takes it. It t- I mean, it doesn't take a lot to go the wrong way, um, and it takes a lot to go the right way. So the more you teach someone, and then I teach a couple, it's infectious and it moves across the whole mm-hmm. industry. There's nothing better than watching a kid drive the boat for the first time. Mm. That is another piece that we don't talk about because mm-hmm. we take it for granted. But there isn't a kid out that doesn't get on boat. I want to drive. Yeah. But to yeah. teach them the proper way the to Grom handle trick, a boat. All the Grom trips, if the kid asks to drive the boat, I love yeah. yeah. But you want to teach them the responsibility of being a proper boat person, how mm-hmm. to handle it, how to take care of it, how to clean it, right? How mm-hmm. to do the trailering, the backup. Because those are all skill sets that you can take anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And it's not just about the fishing anymore. Mm-hmm. It's about other life skill sets. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what's infectious, I think. And nice. I think important Definitely. that we're building a better person not just a better fisherman. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely. And that's the the Tom story just now was a prime example of you take a kid or a person and take them fishing. 
and show them how to do it once. Then they become good at it, and then they take the next person, mm -hmm. and then that person gets good at it, and they take the next person. So that's the whole point of our future generation. And we always we all say it all the time. That's our future generation. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. You get the kids on the water, so then they get good at it and take the next ones on the water, then the next ones, and the next one. That's how you grow the fishing community. That's how you keep fishing alive. You know, mm -hmm. keep people doing things alive, not people playing video games and playing on their phones for all their lives. Yeah. <laughs> That's what keeps happening more and more and more. Yeah. That we gotta, you know, it's just to keep to be a real person. You need to be your face out of the phone and get out there and do things. And what better thing is there than go out and catch fish? <laughs> right? well, people don't realize it's not just the fishing. The experience of being on the water, the things we see, the, the views we get to see, 99.9% .9 of the world will never experience right. it. They don't have that opportunity. But it, they don't understand that we go out there and we see positive dolphin, no, we see turtles, everything. we see birds, we see, you it just, name it. It's funny, so we, we auction off trips. We just did an auction trip with, uh, uh, last month. And I took these people out and we're catching bass and stuff and they're having a fun time. And a seal comes up by the boat. Oh my God, look at a seal. Woo, you, you know, they just go nuts over the seal. <sighs> And you're just like, yeah, cool. No, no comment. A seal. Nice. Well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say that you, you like Wayne said, like we are so blessed, like that it becomes regular, you know. And then I took, I did another Grom of the Month trip yesterday, actually. But I think, yeah. it's, it's you fun. do it it's, all the time. It's I, so I had fun a, taking people. It's infectious. Fishing. Yeah. I, I had a buddy. They wanted to go out on a take take out some first time fishermen, and they elected me to be the captain. I encouraged them to rent a sleigh day. They rented a sleigh day, and I drove the boat, and we went out, and they had the time of their life. And, like, we are driving down to the spot, and I see a huge pallet dolphin. And I'm just like, okay, this is my responsibility. Yeah. I go, go drive by. <laughs> yeah. And we go or drive over. Screw, he's like, yeah, 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 normally I would have just, <laughs> you know, and I go get in them and slow down, and it was the most magical. That was probably. When they're in the really, wake, they're under the bow, and they're yep. doing their thing. I don't care. I turn back into a yep. kid. Yeah. I go up on the bow of the boat and I'm watching it. Yeah, you know what? I, I do not take that yeah. for granted any time I'm out but there. But you show a new person that? Oh. And then the whales. We <laughs> They're going to talk about that for the rest right. of their lives. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, I told them that too. I go, well, you know, if the fishing's not good, we could go get go see whales or whatever too. But <laughs> the fishing was slow by my standard, but it was still great by theirs. Well, that's exactly. The because we all caught quality stuff. We got big old red. Uh, net, the two of the people had never fished ever not even held a fishing pole, grabbed a spinning setup that was provided by Slay Day. I, I had put double rigs on them, and they're just all day slaying, catching fish by themselves. First trip, you know, obviously there's a tangle here or there like anybody else would have, but I was so impressed. And they did really good. Uh, Matt, he caught a 25-inch halibut. And I told him, it's I go, first time my fishing son, ever. Yeah, it's first time fishing ever. He got a 25-inch halibut. That's the standard kind of high for the future, though. Yeah, with a, with wow. a hookup bait. And, and I told him, this is funny too because i told him I go, my son has been trying for like three years straight just to catch a legal halibut he's wanting to get illegal because we fish all the time i go i don't know if you know how special this is and then no. my son my i text a picture to my son and he goes hey i, I caught i caught a 25 inch today too <laughs> it's like halibut day was yesterday i guess so, but it's amazing like just it's kind of selfish that was kind of for me too because you yeah. feel so good doing it no, you know yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. special, yeah. Um, speaking of Grom trips, um, I know that you and Chad were both on the boat for Jack's catching oh my God. his yellow towel. And that is We that just is happened best, to watch that video yeah, again the other the day. the best good feeling um, video. But I've said you, it before, I'll say it again. If you ever having a bad day, go to Hook Up Bait's YouTube page and look up. Uh, Yellowtail Fever? Yellowtail Fever. I think that's what it's called, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. to see some stoke of some kids... Actually, it's just a stoke of a whole whole boat, whole boat. Yeah. <laughs> that will make you smile. It was like four, guaranteed it was to make like you four smile. Four different levels of stoke. Like Chad was like did like a, a four a four way hookup, gaffed all of them. Five way hookup. It was five. It was yeah. Five. yeah. This weekend when I took them fishing on a Grom of the Month trip, I took you guys on a Grom of the Month yeah, last yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna talk about that. And yeah. I told I told uh, I told Chad because we had a halibut coming up. And I go, do I need to get the gaff? I was joking. And I, I pulled the cork off with my teeth and spit it out. <laughs> and I go, I always wanted to do that. <laughs> because that be on Chad, that video. Chad had to do that on the um, Grom trip because he had a rod in one hand, a bunch of uncapable fishermen around him with 
you know, yellow tail All on. bent on yellow, And yeah. he, gra- he kicks it off. I remember. That still does a great, <laughs> great, great. Grab that gap. Great yeah. And then yeah. one hand. <laughs> <laughs> but that day, everybody caught a yellow tail. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was remarkable. Yeah. That was another bucket list. My son was just so happy he got the. He was like, oh, yeah. he kept holding it up, and I, in the video you hear me, I'm like, keep it loud, yeah. put it down. <laughs> You're gonna do that one. <laughs> We've all done that too. Yes. And little Jax, I mean, he bless his little heart. I mean, he did not let go of that rod, and mm-hmm. and he you know yeah. pulled it in, and I mean, yeah. what is great job. To see a kid about this tall. Yeah, the little kid yellow tail about the same size as him, yeah. and he, it was cast to catch yeah. all him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Yes, yes, biggest one too of everybody. His by couple <laughs> pounds was the biggest. We're like, yeah. Well, and his little yelling at the end. The of, wildcat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That that was an awesome Grom trip. So that was one of the one of the best ones. Yeah. And just thank God Tom was. Filming that day. Yeah. Well, I started getting a bunch of invites after that. You know, to help on the ground trips. Like, hey, that worked out pretty yeah. good. Yeah, filming the trip because I hate filming. Yeah. So if you're a good filmer, you get invites also. Yeah. That's right. Well, and you deck can for. Well, the you're too busy catching said. fish. Yeah. That's why. Chad's Chad's on the front end, making sure they're catching if they're not catching themselves, uh-huh. and then and unhooking and helping hook and hand with them. So it, it it helps to have someone there just to help. Period. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, also, um, something to touch base on. I know that we have certainly decorated our new shop with your SPS checks, mm-hmm. um, many, many of them on the wall. But you also have decorated uh, SPS checks uh, for yeah. you and Cash. And how's that feel to walk in? your in? dining room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did a little redecorating last year after the Saltwater Bath Series. I had... I did the same thing this year. It was like, I'm going to pile everything just on this table here and we're going to save the checks. Cause it was like, I'd never, we'd never got a big check and we got three last year, the big fake ones, you know? So I was like, we got to do something with these. And I looked at the wall and I'm like, we're going right here. Like <laughs> dining room, right on the wall, you know, the three checks and six plaques. And you know, it's like, Oh, that's awesome. And then I, this year we, we got a, a big check and plaques, Big fish in second place in the first turn. I was like, oh man, this is gonna be a great this year. We're going for another wall. Well, now we're to the end of the yeah. year, and I'm like, yeah. I think I could just fit it in the rest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whole curse of catching a fish on your first cast. Yeah, yeah. We, did, uh, we didn't get any more hardware after that, but we had a good time. So, but, I mean, that is a great feeling to be able to look at your accomplishments yeah. as as we have. Several walls here of different accomplishments. You mean going down the east and west wing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah my son's got an impressive little array because he has his of all times. You know, he kept all his plaques. So, you know, he's got a few years of being very successful up there. You know, looking looking good up there, Cash. Good job, buddy. That's right. Got all that bling. Yeah. Um, also, um, we, we've had two hookup baits tournaments um, in the past. I think so, yeah. Um, Wayne, you were MC and did a great job. Um, and I know that we had hoped to have one, but COVID hit, and obviously that's changed things. Um, kind of give each of your experiences of we had, you know, different divisions where, you know, Groms could fish on the shore, they could be in a kayak, they could be in a boat. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of touch base on each of your experiences of what that tournament did for our Grom program and. Um, we hope to bring it back someday, yeah. um, but uh, that that was such a great experience for us as well as them. Yeah, well, it's a lot of work, but it was awesome at the same time. You know, because we don't do anything hookup baits half ass. Yeah. No, I've never <laughs> seen a tournament like <laughs> no. that. First yeah. one we went to, I've and never so been the one that had yeah, a Yeah, we do a tournament. Ball. We're doing a tournament, and. Yeah. We you needed know. extra tents for that raffle. <laughs> <laughs> Ten tables. You did. Yeah. We yeah. did. I mean, so it is a big thing for us. And, it, I mean, we're still growing like crazy. So it's just it's trying to find time. Is what yeah. the but that, the, is. what she touched on was it was uh, a tournament for anybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, it didn't matter. You we, could fish the shoreline. Yep. You could fish in a kayak. And that's, Anything that floated, you could fish in. Uh, and, and it, then it was catered to make yeah. sure there's kid divisions. Yeah. And we broke it up in, you know, small kids, yeah. teenage kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and that was, a, you know, we made that uh, an important part of the yeah. tournament, mm-hmm. that kids are involved. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. To get them into fishing and make it accessible for them. And well, we had a couple else. of we had and a couple of we had, parents come down with they didn't know how to teach and we actually right. let them use our rods and reels. Took them down to the docks yeah. and mm-hmm. yeah. taught them how to fish. Mm-hmm. One kid got a spotty, I think, right from the dock, and yeah. Yeah. that was his first fish. We even had a casting contest. Yeah, casting we had that contest. Too. Yeah. I mean, but then at the same time, we made it an adult tournament too. I mean, so it's yeah. a whole array of you know from five to ten year olds to adult. You know, and turn season tournament fishermen all fishing in a tournament, yeah. but in their own section, which is awesome, but makes things that much more difficult, also. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I mean, but that's just the way we do things. And so, yeah, we definitely we get asked all the time, I get asked all the time, when is the next hookup bait tournament? When yeah. are you guys going to do it again? You know, well, we I mean, do, I, we've got such great ideas for the next one. I mean, I mean it just, oh, there's so many ideas asking, floating around. As yeah. I keep fishing so tournaments, awesome. I keep thinking of yeah. things. I'm like, ooh, right. I like that. Yep. Well, I, I like the, I like the idea of the Groms versus the adults. <laughs> yeah. I think you're going to yeah. be surprised on yeah. who's going to yeah. win that one now. And I think a pro am is a great one where you yeah. have a back boater and a front boater, and you get let. It's like a every one that would be like a Grom of the month for every single kid at yeah. that day would be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. even like a, a kid pro-am. That would yep. be cool. We, uh, a we, teenage kid with one of the the tournament yeah. hookup baits. Well, not even have to be a tournament or somebody of that Cal caliber. Has to, yeah. has to be a tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll be I, filming. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll be on the show with the mic. <laughs> what that tournament did uh, for me personally was I, I, we really, really didn't do them. We, we didn't know how to do it. it. It forced me to reach out to people in the community and band with some like-minded people to see if I could get in a boat division because we wanted to get on a boat. Yeah. And it worked out. We talked to this uh, gentleman named Alec or Fishing Mission Bay. What's up, brother? I'll never forget this. <laughs> We did the first hookup bait tournament in his 17-foot sailboat that he uses as a <laughs> skiff with a tiller. This dude's awesome, dude. And we all fished yeah. off it in the bay, and, you know, it was great. And then if the it second, floats. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing, I mean, I had bought a boat It's by the time the second one came, but it was broken. We shore-pounded, and we had a great time, you know, yeah. and it was about participation and just the whole vibe of everything not you know it didn't matter if we were doing the boat or not after well the first time we just wanted to do it because we've never done a boat tournament we're like we're doing a boat tournament yeah but we're doing it on a 17 foot sailboat like <laughs> everybody was probably like what the heck are those guys? <laughs> but alex super fishy i'm sure he's uh, still yeah. slaying on the on the old skip i don't hear too much of them anymore yeah, yeah we got to go back to that mighty might tournament and do that thing again oh, yeah. that or the little awesome. kids the kid rod tournament that we oh, did no. from the shore and went to different yeah, I just i'm thinking of that now is we get a lot of tournament you know because we know a lot of the tournament guys you know the real season pro tournament guys you know get about 15 to 20 guys that yeah. have boat tournament fishermen and get about 20 groms you know yeah. 15 12 to 18 year olds mm-hmm. and do a pro-am that way yeah. a, a grom pro Pro oh, that'd be awesome, right? Can you mm. imagine that? that Everybody that, I that know sounds awesome. that does tournament fishing would be so down. You know? So if you have an interest, either you have a boat or your grom, let us know. Mm-hmm. Yep, that'd be great. And they might have to bring their own grom. Who knows? You know, or we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be bringing back the grom program. Uh, we will be um, um, presenting that on social media. We'll be rolling that out soon. Um, we do, or we're doing things a little different this time. It won't be just on their social media presence, which will be very important. But also, we actually have an application mm-hmm. that we have um, that we will have online that a, a Grom can complete. Complete. Uh, we'll have an interview, so we're wow. going to do this a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, and and of course, their social media and their um, capacity in fishing hookup baits and being familiar with the product is going to be certainly important as well. Um, but the questions that we're asking is really a well-rounded young man. It's not just about fishing. It's or a woman. A woman, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, it, it's about, you know, what fishing clubs are you in? Do you do tournaments? Um, um, what school activities you do? Um, grades. Grades. Grades will be very important. There has to be a minimum GPA. And more importantly, we want the parents to sign off that they support this and they understand the the requirements of a Grom and um, will be supporting that for yeah. us. Yeah, so the whole Grom program is at a whole other level. It's yes. just not choosing a kid. The kid actually has to do some work, fill yes. out an application, yes. meet all the yeah. standards, and then you know, then he becomes a Grom of hookup baits, and then 
to win a trip on the boat. You still that doesn't guarantee him a trip on the boat then, right? Yeah. So what what's that part of it? Well, there'll be um, two trips a year. So um, now that we're bringing this back, we'll have the one trip by the end of the year where mm-hmm. uh, a Grom will be selected for the top Grom. Mm-hmm. And there are certain specifications for that. And then in 2024, there'll be two trips. Mm-hmm. So we'll have uh, the qualifications of what's needed to be Grom. And then we hope that that Grom of, um, on that trip will be an ambassador. So again, mm-hmm. continue to move up. But I have to say, the reason why we are moving the Grom program up to these standards really is the Groms that have become ambassadors. They have taught us so much, Mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that this continued caliber of gentlemen and women um, become part of our Hookup Bates family. Yeah. And so, um, you know, thanks for setting the standards. Um, thanks for moving us up to a new level, and <laughs> yeah. uh, we we definitely look forward to these applications. Again, we'll get this on social media so everybody knows about it. Yeah. So explain again one more time. To be a Grom is not just social media anymore, Mm-mm. because you know I'm sure a lot of them still remember how it used to be. Just, yeah. Just tag Grom of the month and hope to get chosen. Right. It's not that simple no more. No. no. You if you want to be a Grom, they email you. Or well, there'll be an application online. We'll also have this oh, on so social media. Oh, so they just media. go to our website. They're going to go to our website. Um, but, um, and download the application, fill it out. Download the application. They will email that application to me, answer all the questions. We will be looking at their social media. So obviously, um, you know, if they are fishing hookup baits, that's going to be important because yeah. they're familiar with the bait. Yeah, they're um, not doing anything stupid on their social media. Dude, yeah. This is <laughs> awesome because it's actually like a job application. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a mock-up of what you need to do. To get a job. Yes. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's this time you're trying to get a job as an awesome little Life's girl that gets to go on the boat and be one of this awesome crew. That's the kind of kids we want to take fishing. And the, the benefits of this family are un... I couldn't even tell you. It's just yeah. great. It's a whole second family. Call it what you want. A gang, a family, a group. Fraternity, a sorority. Fraternity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it's great. It really is. So we'll have this online. Um, we will have a um, social media blast that Tom and I will work on in Chad. And the application will be on our website. Um, you'll go to the website. It will also be noted in our monthly newsletter that goes out to over 7,000 people. So there'll be a lot of presence to know where to get this information um, and then um, how to become a Grom and then from that point how to become an ambassador. So. And then the fishing trip is kind of almost like their graduation from Grom to Ambassador. Yes. There you yes. go. Yes. Gotcha. So you'll know who you are when you when you make the ranks. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. Tuning in. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you, everybody, for being a part of this. We are very excited to bring the Grom program back and uh, more information to follow um, in the next few weeks. Yes. The future, the young is our future of fishing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. The more kid programs we can support, the better. Absolutely. So. The more kids we can get into fishing, the better. So, yeah, let's keep it going, guys. So start being an ambassador now and apply later. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. let's go fishing. Yeah, and this is this what we're asking is just what you should be doing in life anyways. That's how life works. That's how what you need to be doing as a grandma or as a young person. So we're just following the same rules of how life should be working for you. So Absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys.